Hello, this is Katie again, and this is day one of hopefully a video every day in May. Um, I did it last October for Halloween. I'm hoping I can do it again this month. So I wanted to uh, use these two sets right away that I'm going to show you because I just got them. I showed them in my last video, and they're very, very cute. Um, from Hello Sweetums, I have Seize the Day and oceans of encouragement. I'm going to be using a little bit from both of these. Um, to save some time, I stamped them and already die cut them out. And then I have a card base ready and then I'll be working with um, the some of this Biffy Speckles paper from Lawn Fawn. This is just the six by six pad to uh, work on the background. So I'll come back to that. Um, I'm going to start coloring. I'll start on the one that um, it's probably going to look kind of like Ariel. So I'll zoom in a little bit. Most of this is going to be coloring. So I'm going to start with RV29 and then R27 and R35 are the other two there. And I actually started um, stamping these. I put a number of them. I put all of them onto my Tim Holtz stamp platform. Um, my travel size one, I don't think it actually matters which one I used. I have the full size one too. Um, but for some reason, when I was pressing them down and I even moved my sleeve down and like kind of rubbed on the plastic, um, <clears throat> they, uh, they weren't stamping. For some reason, like half of the two mermaids wouldn't stamp no matter what I did. So I ended up stamping these um, individually just on stamp blocks, uh, which is fine. I don't love doing a whole bunch at once on the stamp, stamp platform anyway. Um, these stamps are very thick and, uh, the lines are very wide as well. So I didn't need to necessarily double stamp or anything. These are all single stamped since I didn't use the platform. Um, so that works out well. If it were really thin lines, I'd probably want to use the platform for that. But they stamp very well. Um, I would, I'm trying to think, I haven't used any of my Sweet Stamp Shop images in a while, but I would compare the thickness, um, kind of to that brand. And they're, uh, they're very good. They're photopolymer. But um, they're just a little, a little thicker as a stamp as well, like the holding the stamp itself. Um, the, but the lines are thick too, kind of probably even thicker than Lawn Fawn. Um, so let's see. I pre-picked out my markers, so I'm not having to go through this. So I have uh, E21 and E51. I'm going to use this one first for her face and her arms. And then it did get a little bit of red on her hand, but you can kind of push, hold down your Copic and kind of push that back out uh, to bleed out the red with the lighter color. So that works. I forgot her little midriff too. So I'll go get that. So E21 is the darker one, and then E51. Is the lighter one. And then we will do her purple. I'm going to do V17 and V15 for her little shell bra. Hopefully that didn't bleed. No, that's just the black stamp. So then we'll blend that out just so we have some, some dimension in there. And then I think her, uh, I missed part of her hand at the end. There we go. Okay. And then for her tail, I want to use, let's see, 
that one I set aside. I think I want to use YG03. I'm going to use this combination on the turtle as well. But I'm going to use YG03 and YG23. Just kind of a, a bright green. The other mermaid is going to get kind of a, a teal treatment. And I might throw in... Another green, let me grab YG07 and kind of see what I can blend out here. And then back to YG23. I'm trying to get better about using the, I think I'm blending two colors and then it kind of just blends into nothing and you don't really see a difference. So I'm trying to get more of the, dimension in there. Where did I put YG07? Didn't I just have it? Nope. Yes, I did. YG03. That's very strange. This is a different marker. Huh. That really disappeared. I have no idea where that marker went. Okay. All right, so then I'm just going to use a yellow, whoops, sorry about that, Y06 for the little star in her hair. Don't need to blend that. All right, so we have our little aerial type mermaid. And then for the turtle, I'm going to use the YG03 and YG23 in the, um, actually, I'm going to color in all of these in the, his little circles on his shell and the inside part is going to be darker. I'm just wondering if that okay I might just leave that without blending any further and then I have G28 and YG67 for kind of the inside of his shell so here and there and then maybe just coming in from the sides oh there's G07 what is YG oh I swapped marker lids that's what happened that's why I couldn't see it oh so G07 I have a G07 where did my other lid go YG, maybe I put it back, YG05, I'm going to pause while I sort this out, hang on, okay, so my YG67, the actual marker, was in my marker box, and I had swapped some lids, so that was stupid, uh, so I actually never even pulled it out, so we'll blend this in between just to get a bunch of different green, bits and then I want to blend that one out a little bit okay um I'm gonna try I have set aside a couple other uh greens I'm gonna try I didn't think about his little turtle skin so I'm gonna try YG 13 which is chartreuse so we'll color him. <clears throat> Actually, don't even know if this is accurate. It's probably a little darker than that. We grew up with turtles. We had like five of them, but they were like box turtles. They weren't sea turtles by any means. But uh, maybe I can add some actual G07 now that I have it to him. And blend that out. I'm kind of playing these greens by ear. Go back to YG13. And then just blend him out a little bit more. 
kind of keep doing it until it looks how you want it. Okay. And then um, I'm also going to be doing the little cheeks with the white dots on these guys. So we will do these for her and the turtle. I've been using RV 13, I believe. Little cheekies there. Does he need one or two? He probably needs two. And then give them little dots. Oops, that was too big. Oh well, too close together. I don't know who started doing that, but I think it's pretty cute. So, okay, so I will set those two guys aside. Um, we have another mermaid. I'm going to do, let's see. For her skin, I have, what is above me? E37 and E99 are next to each other like this on my hex chart, like left and right. So I'm hoping, I don't know if I've blended these before, I'm hoping this works out okay. Um, I think it should be just fine. And then I always forget, I keep forgetting their tummies as well. And then her hair is going to be fairly dark. I don't like coloring with the black Copics. I have 100 and 110, but they're very, very dark. And they kind of just wash out the, the lines. And so I'm going to try and use the uh, two darker W grays that I have for her hair. I have W9 and W7 and hope that that works out just so it's not completely lost or the lines aren't uh, lost in the process. So we'll go around her star. I'll just go up a little bit and got my nail uh, and then just blend the rest out with the W7. That shouldn't be too bad. And then I can go as dark as I need to with the W7 as well. All right. So this will be a fairly coloring heavy video if you haven't noticed. I'm going to do a tiny sliver of her hair tie that's going to match her uh, fin tail. Is it just a tail? Her bottom half? Whatever mermaids call them. Um, uh, oh. Ooh, I'll do this orange. I don't think I actually decided that, but I set aside some orange for the fish. So I'm going to, I have, sorry, that was BG49, and I have BG45. Um, the colors in this area, I don't have all of them, but the ones that I have don't seem to look like they would blend very well. Like uh, BG45 next to 49, they're next to each other on the chart, but one is very dark turquoise and one is like light blue, almost. But I'm hoping that this works out. If you just keep blending, it can get a little bit muddled, but the light kind of works out the dark as well. So you can just keep blending. And then I'm going to be using this on the fish as well, but I have YR04. And then Y38, blend out the top. 
So I think blue and orange go pretty good together. So I'll set her aside. We'll do her cheekies. Hopefully I can hold this here long enough. If you just kind of, if you're working with like a lighter on a darker, you can hold it to just kind of use the alcohol to bleed out so it kind of wins over the other color, if you can see that. And then the white will make that pop even more. I'll try and slow down and do these right. Okay. So now she's got her little, that might look kind of silly, but her little cheeks. And then these fish are kind of small. It's like a set of four in one stamp. But I will do <clears throat> my YR04 and then YR38. Can't really see too much of a blend, but that's okay. And then um, a different technique on these and the rocks I'm going to show you. I'm going to use RV. 13, sorry, this die cut is so small and I already cut it out. And then RV21, which is a lighter one. I'm just gonna cover the circles as well. So I'm kind of um, basing this off of a card by T from Lemon Tea Crafts. Her name is T, T-H-I but her blog is lemon tea crafts, like T-E-A, drinking tea. So I have RV13 going into RV21, and I wanna not bleed that out too much because I wanna show that difference. But then, and this is kind of how she colored a couple of them, I want to dot with RV14, which is darker, and if this works, kind of create these dots and hopefully they don't disappear <laughs> into the coloring. Um, but just to kind of give it like some texture. So, uh, and then for the rocks I have, I'm gonna be using C. I usually use C for things like rocks or, I don't know, stone colored things. I'm going to do the same, so C9 will be my darkest, but I'm going to use C7 and C5 for the blending on the rocks. So I will do C7, maybe where you would expect shading. And this one's very little, so I apologize. I might be covering it up with my finger as I color. We're flipping it over and then C5 to blend that out and the C5 can actually uh, brighten up the C7 as well like I'd mentioned before you can use those lighter colors if you keep blending um, if you had made something too dark you can just keep going over it and it keeps kind of lightening it and lightening it I think I did a lot of that on um, back in October when I did the every video or video every day. I did um, one with all gray Copics and I used, well, I think it was a mix, but I was showing you a set. I had grabbed the N gray set because I don't have it in Copics. I grabbed that in the Artist's Loft alcohol markers, the Michaels, the ones that Michaels carries. And... Um, kind of tested that out and I noticed that it did that very well picking up the darker color with the lighter ones and like lightening it I guess when I look at my phone I can almost see oops that was stupid and that's c5 so now we can test my theory I need to lighten this up um I can see the the shading even better than kind of in person because the camera catches it in a funny way. So now that's darker than I wanted it to be. But then we take C9 and kind of just dot along the bottom. So it's darker than 
trying to use the tip too so it's not so um, darker than the darkest one you blended with. And if you try and control it, then you can have a lot smaller dots. So we've got that. And I'll probably add some white lines to these as well. The last thing to color is this one here. And I just realized that's more rocks. So I'm going to do C7 and then C5 again. And then those other greens I had set aside were for these little plants here. So I won't darken these ones up too much and then take again C9 and just little dots along the bottom. Then the two greens I had set aside and I might throw a G07 in there is I have YG05 and YG13. So I wanted to kind of go darker at the base and then blend out YG13, which isn't too different. And so I think that's why I wanted G07 as well. So I will do some more. And then YG13 again, just to blend out that darker green or to soften that a little bit. Okay. So I have these images here and we just need to make the background and then I have a sentiment mounted up as well. I'm going to pause really quick while I put away my markers so I can get them out of the way and I will be right back. Okay. So I have all my markers put away and then we're going to work on, oh, I need to zoom out. We're going to work on the background. So I'm going to cut this down to card base size. Ow. Five and a half by four and a quarter. My trimmer, I think, is trying to kill me. I haven't decided yet. And then, uh, this one as well, but you'll see where we're, I'm sorry, I'm not showing you these measurements. Anyway, it's five and a half by four and a quarter. Um, how we're going to work with this one. Okay, so first I'm going to use the largest of my stitch rectangles from Little Inker Designs. I finally put them in a different packaging. Um, you'll see, you'll notice the largest one isn't going to cut a frame at all. It's just the stitching. I've used this in probably the past few videos, I think. Um, so I cut it to the card base size and I want to keep it as is. I just want to put the stitching on it. So you just have to line up the stitching and center it on the piece of paper that I trimmed. And then it's just going to put the stitches into it. So there's those. And then I'm going to do the same on the yellow, but we are going to trim it down. We're just going to use it for the sand bed a couple layers of the sand bed, I think, if I thought about that properly. I think I did. Okay, so now I have it on the yellow, and then I'm going to keep the big shot out because I... we're going to use, I've kind of combined like Lawn Fawn and I think Pretty Pink Posh all on one strip just because they're similar things. Um, but I'm going to be using this one. I believe it's Pretty Pink Posh. It's stitched and cutting like a hillside. So I'm going to cut a bigger one. I'll try and show you. I'm just going to give it kind of like that kind of angle. So that's going to be maybe a little bit shorter. That's going to be the first one. You just want to make sure your die is not going off the edge or it will bend when it goes through. Okay. So then this is going to be our first like here. And then I need to flip this over because I need to use the other side. 
And I'm going to kind of hold this here for reference, but um, I kind of want like this much. So if I hold that on there, I think that's good. But move the other one. Then I can just feed this through. I think the die had enough room. And then we have our second one. So I will put this away. And then put the die away and show you what that came up with. We're going to layer these with um, foam tape. Basically, it'll look like that but I'm going to lift it up. So, let's see. The first thing I want to do, I think, is I wanna stick the blue down to the card base and then I'll stamp the sentiment. I haven't really planned the layout as much as I probably should have, but we'll stick this down to the card base and then the sentiment is from the mermaid set I picked the you're flippin awesome so I'll just use memento and I think I just want to put it kind of in the middle I'm hoping this stamps well the first time I'll put it oops. Works for me. All right, so we're gonna work around that. I will clean that stamp later. So I think what I wanna do is stick this one down and then raise the other one up on foam because I don't want it to be like three times layered foam. Um, I won't be putting this one in the mail, but it'll be easier to deal with. So I'm gonna line that up with the bottom. No, no. And then this one, I will put foam tape on. Oops, brought my tweezers a little bit. I will put some more. And then I'll trim off that part. Um, I'll put a little bit more. I think I'll trim it down just in case I need to tuck anything behind it. I don't know yet. But we'll stick this down. And then we will place everyone else. And hopefully I can do that before my camera wants to turn my video into one file and start a new one. So we have that. And then, so I think what I'm gonna do is gonna pause while I just get some foam tape on the back of these things um, and maybe situate them and then I will show you the rest of it and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've, uh, nobody has stuck down yet but I've placed them where I wanted them. So I have some foam tape on this guy. I'm actually have it hanging over this one here. I've got foam tape on the back of, definitely not Ariel, but probably Ariel. And then, um, whatever her name is gonna be. And then our turtle is gonna be there. Uh, and the rest are just going to be stuck down. So I'm going to get some glue. And it's not going to open for me. Hang on one sec. Okay, so I just got frustrated with it and chopped off the tip. So somebody call Lorena. Just kidding. That's not funny. Okay. So... Uh, I often do that with these. They have 
kind of a long tip anyway, but when they get clogged and I can't find a safety pin, um, I just end up cutting off the end. Um, let's do, try not to do too much so it doesn't squeeze out the sides. And then we just have the fish and then I'm going to add some white accents to it to everybody so this is the pen that I use the jelly roll 08 sakura and hang on one sec okay sorry I had to sneeze so I'm going to do some just accent I don't know what these are everyone does them um oh my goodness oh I had to sneeze again my goodness I don't know why I'm sneezing so hopefully I'm not doing too many of these because I don't really know never really do them right but that's okay so that oh yeah and then on her little fin here Mr. Turtle can have some shine. I think it looks the best when you go over like lines. It actually looks very deceiving, like it is shining. Um, so I think that should be good. And that'll be the card. So I'll show you it up close. And that is all. Thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.